How's it going? My name is Mulder and welcome to GameCron, your number one stop for tips and tricks on your favorite video games. Today we continue our journey on Pathfinder Kingmaker Gameplay Tips and Tricks Part 3. In this video I'll show you one of the quick ways that you can get as much gold slash money that you can then use to buy new equipment and gear for both you and your companions. I'll also quickly go over what type of companions I'm currently running in my party that gives me a great frontline force. And then finally, if you're struggling to find new companions as you're searching around the world map and traveling around, I have one unique suggestion to where you can go off and buy new companions to add them both to your party and to your kingdom. All that and more straight ahead. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. We have a few videos left to cover on this game, so let's get started in our Pathfinder Kingmaker Tips Part 3. Strike to be proud of! Let's kick things off by talking about how to get as much gold slash money that you can find in the game. You'll notice at the beginning of the game that everything from equipment for camping, your weapons, spells, potions, pretty much anything in the game is going to cost you a pretty penny. Now you can earn gold in many different ways, from talking to other companions or people that you meet along your journey by helping them out during certain types of quests, but one of the fastest ways for you to get as much money as you need is to simply hoard as much downed equipment that you can get from people that you've either taken out or creatures that you've hunted down. Hoarding daggers, pieces of armor, shields, weapons, just anything that you can find, even little trinkets of say little pieces of gold, pearls, certain types of stones, hoard all that stuff, especially if you have a full party with you. The weight can be distributed amongst you and the rest of your party, so you can actually hoard quite a bit. Once you're almost at full capacity, head either back to your kingdom or to a local merchant. Merchants in this game, through my experience so far, never run out of money to give you for every single item you sell them. I've had times where just playing the game for a few hours, I was able to hoard as much material as I could, go back, sell it to a merchant, and walk away with over 20,000 in gold. It's just that easy. So make sure as you're playing the game and you're taking down certain characters or exploring lost ruins or opening secret chests, try to hoard as much items as you possibly can. It also pays very well for either you or someone in your group to be very high on trickery. When you're high on trickery, it allows you to unlock chests or secret passageways a lot easier, which then of course leads to more rare loot inside to where either you can keep it for yourself or sell it. Speaking of team, let's now talk about companions. Now there's a multitude of companions that you can get in this game. Some are going to be part of your main story and others you just meet along your journey if you're in the right place at the right time. Currently for my team right now, since I'm a slayer character and I'm good at close quarters combat, my team's made up of a bard, barbarian, fighter, inquisitor, and a wizard. My overall system of attack works like this. My slayer character, barbarian, fighter, and inquisitor lead the charge whenever enemies show up on the field. My fighter character, Valerie, is the one who leads the charge most of these attacks, far very closely to my barbarian. My bard and wizard not only provide cover fire for my characters with either bows and arrows along with their spells, but also areas of effect. For example, my bard can turn on her music and begin singing, which will add stats effects to my character, either increasing their overall damage, resistance, or giving them courage in the midst of a fight. My wizard will be launching different type of fire and acid spells that are damaged certain types of creatures you meet along your journey, such as swarms of bugs that can only be damaged with acid or fire attacks, or trolls or dragons to where sometimes they'll have to be damaged with certain types of elemental spells. The reason why I like running with a team like like this, especially since I've been powering up my frontline fighters including my main character, is because I can literally steamroll my way through so many enemy encounters. From ancient wyverns, to giant slugs, to hordes of barbarians, you name it, I actually have not run into too many difficult situations to where my overall team couldn't take down. The great thing about me having so many frontline fighters in this game is that it allows me to break off certain characters in the midst of a fight to go after key enemies while the rest of my characters can hold the line. For example, you may run into a few times where enemy druids will be on the field to where they'll always be in the far back supporting their front line. I can send off my barbarian to where she can use her charge ability which quickly cuts the distance between her and her enemies, cutting them down really quickly, followed closely either by my slayer character or a fighter character. These guys, or ladies I should say, are excellent front line fighters for me and I've really been doing my best to power them up, giving them unique weapons that add such as acid effects on them, or certain type of elemental effects, while adding certain cloaks, amulets, or pieces of armor that adds more constitution for them, dexterity, and overall strength. The only times I've ever had a little bit of a challenge with this party of certain characters that I've built it was whenever the enemy randomly just shows up behind my flank. But again, because I have so many fighters at my disposal, I can easily break off to send my Inquisitor to go hold them off while I get my Bard and my Wizard to safety. Another great thing too is that because I have an Inquisitor, a Bard, and a Wizard, that is three spellcasters in this group. To where I've added the Inquisitor to have a lot of healing and aerial effect spells, my Wizard has a lot of frontline attack spells that have different type of elemental abilities, such as fire, ice, and acid, and of course my Bard, who also has healing abilities for herself, 
but overall area of effects that only a bard can have. There is no right or wrong way to build your team up in this game. Definitely use your companions to the best of their ability that fits your playstyle. For me, I'm more of a frontline blitz type of player. I like having a lot of frontline characters to where I can cut the distance from my opponents and kill any high powered characters such as wizards, sorcerers, or inquisitors on the other team before they're able to cast a lot of their spells. Definitely build your team up the best way you see fit. But now how can you build a good compelling team full of different types of companions if you have no real companions to find? Well, there's a way in this game to where you can then purchase with in-game currency such as the gold you've been hoarding if you've been getting all the stuff like I told you earlier that you can sell to a merchant to where you can purchase brand new companions. Once you have a decent amount of gold and you're noticing that you don't have enough advisors for your kingdom or enough companions to go traveling with you, head to Oleg's trading post up north that you recently visited at the very start of this game. When you get to his trading post, head inside. You'll know there's a character just hanging out at the front desk called Eight Eyes. This character is a pathfinder. Now if you don't see her in the trading post, that means she's now in your capital, most likely in your tavern. That's where I found her for me. Now she offers two unique services. The first is that she can retrain any character in your party, including your character. So for example, if you're playing as a Slayer character, but you're not liking all the offensive abilities and you want to switch to more magical, simply go to her, pay her, in which case you can then retrain your character from scratch. But then finally, if you need some companions or advisors, this is the character to visit. She'll tell you that you'll have some hero friends within the area to where if you pay her a one-time deal of gold, they will automatically join your team and stick with you no matter what. Or at least until you tell them to get lost if you don't like them. This is a great way to pick up some new advisors if you're struggling to fill up some certain areas of your kingdom like say a treasurer, a regent, or a general, or anything that you're missing for your kingdom. And like I said in my previous video, you need as many advisors as you possibly can to help run operations a lot smoothly for your kingdom and get more money coming in for your kingdom to build up your economy. But also if you feel like your companions that you've got in the beginning of the game aren't to your liking, this is the character you need to go see to then purchase some new characters to where you can add them to your party. Keep one thing in mind, it will get more expensive the more characters you purchase from this character and the higher your level. One minute you could be spending 500 gold on one character, but then when you come back to visit her again, once you're say at level six or seven, it could actually wind up costing you between nine to 10,000 gold. So I definitely say head up north as soon as you can to purchase new companions from Eight Eyes before it gets too expensive. Again, it's up to you how you want to play. And that's it for our Pathfinder Kingmaker Gameplay Tips and Tricks Part 3. I have a couple more videos to make on this game depending upon how my current playthrough is going which is going pretty well this game definitely has its unique challenges and different ways to how to play so there's a multitude of different ways you can play this game i'll definitely be focusing my last video or videos on this game on the remaining parts of the kingdom i'm currently trying to build certain encounters i've found in the open world and how my current settlements are going i definitely want to leave these videos for you to where you can build your own character and your own path without having to follow mine step by step the more help and creative freedom i can give you the more fun you're going to have in this game because there's definitely times this game can be pretty complicated but you definitely have to stick around to my next pathfinder Kingmaker's tips video very soon. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. We do a plethora of tips and tricks on your favorite video games on this channel, and the next video series we're going to be working on is Marvel's Avengers, followed then by Star Wars Squadrons, Watch Dogs Legion, Cyberpunk 2077, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and so much more. So definitely stick around. I'm Mulder, and I'll see you next time in the Game Cron. <laughs>